Small businesses often get the same silly advice. Get a website. I mean, if you don't have a website, you're basically invisible. 40% of small businesses don't have a website, but with Verizon websites powered by... But as the internet has matured, we're starting to see what the future of small business really looks like. And it turns out it's not just small businesses with websites, it's small businesses that bring their entire business operations online. Let me explain. This is Annie. She's the founder of Annie's Flowers, a flower shop. Now this is what a traditional flower shop looks like. But Annie's Flowers doesn't look anything like this. It's actually just an online store. Customers browse her catalog. They place orders. And Annie's delivery team delivers the flowers. Annie is going after the same customers as a traditional retail store. But unlike a traditional retail store, Annie has brought her business operations online. Let me explain. Instead of in-person shopping, customers browse her catalog. Instead of needing an employee to check customers out, customers self-check out on the online store. Instead of customers driving to the store, flowers are delivered to them. And instead of a storefront on a busy street, Annie's customers find out about her through Instagram ads. Bringing her business operations online unlocks major benefits. For example, cheaper rent. Since Annie's store is online, she doesn't have to rent space in an expensive retail location. Instead, she can find space in a cheaper part of town. And because she doesn't have a retail space that needs to be stocked, Annie doesn't carry as much inventory. Instead, her team creates bouquets on demand, as they're ordered. And like all businesses that bring their operations online, Annie has new insights into her customers. For example, some of her customers join her mailing list. And Annie will occasionally email that list with promotions. Email list customers are more likely to have repeat purchases. Annie uses that insight to target them for additional products like workshops and monthly flower subscriptions. This, I think, is the future of small business. Annie didn't just build a website, she brought her entire business operations online. And that's the future. It's not a small business with a website, it's a small business that brings their business operations online. Let's look at another example. Kevin is a massage therapist. And this is Kevin's website. His customers can create appointments on his website using a booking calendar. Kevin runs his entire business through this booking calendar. And there are some big benefits to that. For starters, it's a much more efficient way of booking than calling Kevin and saying, hey, do you have any appointments in the late afternoon next week? Customers also pay up front during the booking process, which means they are far less likely to be no-shows. Plus, there's a billing portal where repeat customers can find all their receipts. Handy for insurance reasons. Okay, let's quickly look at one more example. Evelyn is a photographer. Like most photographers, she has a portfolio website that shows off her best work to new clients. And like Kevin, Evelyn has scheduling software so clients can book photography sessions. But probably the most interesting thing is that Evelyn creates private online photo galleries for her clients. Here, her clients can browse photos from the session, they can download the photos, and they can even order prints of their favorites. The prints are automatically sent to a printer, and Evelyn gets a cut of the sale without having to do any extra work. So you can see how technology enables new ways of doing business. And that's what the future of small business is all about. It's about bringing business operations online. That's where the magic happens. What can be fun is to stretch our imaginations to go beyond the obvious. So what's the obvious? Well, think of a barber shop. Obviously, they'll need a booking calendar for haircuts. That's an obvious way of bringing their business operations online. But can we stretch our imaginations and go beyond this? Let's try. To do this, let me tell you a little story about barbershops. This is Desmond's barbershop. Inside the barbershop, we find Desmond, the owner. He employs barbers like Eric. Desmond sets the hours, the price of haircuts, 
and in return he takes up to 50% of Eric's earnings. One day, Eric decides to quit Desmond's barbershop to work for a new barbershop down the street. Eric's customers don't really care which barbershop he works from, so Eric's customers follow Eric to the new barbershop. But here's where Desmond gets an idea. Desmond decides to change his business model. He gets rid of everything and decides to start over with a new barbershop, one that operates like a co-working space. So instead of employing barbers, Desmond now lets barbers rent chairs for the day. Eric hears what Desmond is up to and he loves it. So he decides to quit his new job and go back to rent a chair from Desmond. In order to do this, Eric just needs to create his own website with a booking calendar and he's off and running. Now, back at Desmond's co-working shop, Eric is in control. He can set his own rates and he can also choose what days he'll work. Desmond no longer needs to worry about asking Eric to work Saturdays or about finding new customers. So, everybody wins. So this is already kind of a thing. Barbershops do rent out chairs occasionally. But Desmond's new barbershop is something completely different. There is no barbershop brand. It's just a space with chairs that can be rented out. That's it. This would work because the internet allows barbers like Eric to have direct relationships with their customers. They no longer need barbershops to facilitate that relationship. Now you might be thinking, this YouTuber is an idiot. He doesn't know anything about barbershops. Co-working barbershop would not work. That's fine. That's not what I'm trying to show. I'm trying to demonstrate that when business operations move online, sometimes things change. And we can start to get creative and invent new ways of doing old things. Because here's the thing, the internet has a pretty good track record of cutting out the middle person. And the middle person between a barber and their customer is the barbershop. Now the companies in this video are fake companies, um, so I needed to build example websites for them. So naturally I used Squarespace. I think Squarespace is the best tool for bringing small businesses online. With Squarespace, I built an online store for Annie, made Kevin a website with a booking calendar, and built Evelyn a portfolio. In real life, I use Squarespace for all kinds of projects. I use it for my music website, for an online store I run, and for my mom's small business. You can find a link to Squarespace in the video description below, and if you click that link, I might earn a commission. You can also use my partner code, partner10, to get 10% off. Anyways, I hope this video was interesting. Um, I would love to know what you think, so leave a comment if you have any thoughts. Otherwise, thank you for watching.